Why They Failed, weekly analysis of NMC Auskey results with nurse Adrian and your host Georgie. Hello and welcome to episode 32 of Why They Failed from IELTS Medical with me, your host Georgie and our nurse educator Adrian. Nurse Adrian is an NMC OSCE expert and any nurses who train with us may well end up meeting him before their NMC OSCE exam. We are absolutely delighted that he'll be rounding off this season's Why They Fail podcast. Hello Adrian, thank you so much for coming on. Hi, good afternoon and thank you for inviting me. Lovely, it's great to have you. So let's get started with our first example. So example one for episode 32 comes from the catheter specimen of urine station. Okay, so the candidate failed to wipe the sampling port with 2% chlorexidine in 70% isopropyl alcohol and allowed to dry for 30 seconds. The candidate did not clean the port after withdrawing urine from it. This is necessary to decontaminate the sampling port following the procedure. The candidate failed to unclamp the catheter tubing. The candidate applied a clamp prior to the aspiration of urine, but did not verbalize or physically remove the clamp. This may result in the patient's bladder coming to harm due to lack of drainage and an inaccurate output being noted. The candidate failed to verbalize the need to check that the container label is correct and to place the container into a microbiology bag, ready to send to the laboratory as soon as the sample is obtained. Not completing a full container check may result in the patient sample being incorrectly labeled and identified and is therefore a patient safety issue. The candidate failed to dispose of waste appropriately. The candidate did not dispose of the waste as they ran out of time. Failing to dispose of waste safely and correctly may increase the risk of infection to patients and staff. To ensure that everyone involved in waste management is protected from any hazard, a colour-coded system is used to separate waste. The candidate failed to clean their hands with alcohol hand rub after carrying out the procedure using the seven steps of hand hygiene and in accordance with the World Health Organization five moments of hand hygiene. Hand hygiene is essential in order to reduce the risk of healthcare associated infections and to avoid harm to patients and staff. In the initial introduction to the exam, the examiner informed the candidate that they are required to demonstrate hand hygiene in accordance with the World Health Organization Five Moments of Hand Hygiene. Over to you, Adrian. What are your thoughts? Hi, good evening. As clearly highlighted here, one of the key principles when we're doing any station is our hand hygiene. Hand hygiene must be performed at the beginning of all stations and also at the end in keeping with the five moments of hand hygiene. These would include when coming in contact with a client's surface or when doing an aseptic technique and after coming in contact with a client's surface or handling any form of bodily fluids. As highlighted here, it stated firstly that when we're dealing with the catheter specimen of urine, one is required to clean the sampling port. Reason for this is that you're actually neutralizing or decontaminating the surface so that you're ensuring that the sample collected is as pure as possible and is not contaminated with any other organisms, which could then lead to an inaccurate diagnosis for the client and an inaccurate treatment. As stated also in the feedback for this client, they fail to unclamp the cath catheter tubing. But once you're doing the procedure, you are required to clamp so that you're ensuring that you do withdraw a catheter sample. Now, the error here in that when one does not unclamp one, the client is not able to pass any urine via that method. So in fact, the client can come to harm because of poor drainage. And two, then it may be seen by the clinical team that the client is not passing any urine or having any output. And therefore that too can also lead to an inaccurate estimation, thus giving a wrong diagnosis for the client and then leading to the incorrect treatment being prescribed or administered for the individual. Now, that is one thing that one should clearly look out for and ensure that they avoid as much as possible. When it speaks to the matter of the microbiology bag and not checking that correctly, one must ensure that the sample is correctly labeled, it is sealed and it is sent off to the appropriate lab with the appropriate request being requested. 
Failure to do so again can either A, lead to delay in the analysis being completed, B, it can lead to the analysis being tagged under the incorrect patient, which means again, an incorrect diagnosis, or three, it can lead to a delay in the urinalysis and the feedback being sent back. Therefore, the client can again come to further harm because of a delay in the treatment that was appropriate at that point in time. Where the feedback here speaks about the disposal of waste materials. Now, one is very aware that when we come to our clinical stations, we usually have a domestic waste and a clinical waste. And then there are different color codes that are used. So if we're coming in contact with contaminated linen, then there's the appropriate bag that we use. When we're coming in contact with just um, waste materials that may contain bodily fluids, then we would dispose of these things using the clinical waste bin. So the fact that the client did not dispose of it appropriately, that then leads to an infection control problem, which can pose risk not only to the client, but also to those in the area or around, i.e. other nurses or other persons who may be involved in this patient's care. Infection control is also important because this also then ties back to your hand hygiene as well. That's one of the steps that we take to minimize the transfer of microorganisms from either a surface or person to another surface or to another person when we come in contact with them as well. So as it did correctly say, everyone involved in the waste management is required to be protected from any hazards, and that's why we use the appropriate color code. Whether it's a red bag, an orange bag, a yellow bag, or if it's just general waste, then that also has its appropriate color bag. Now, one must remember that when you're doing your hand hygiene, you must go through the seven steps as outlined by the World Health Organization. That ensures that we remove any potential microorganisms or bacteria from our hands, and we make our hands as clean or as sterile as possible to carry out the procedure that we're about to do. Now, fair to do so, as I said, we're handling the person's bodily waste which means that if we don't clean our hands appropriately, we run the risk of taking any microorganisms that that client might have at the present time back with us, which can either A, infect us as a nurse providing care, or B, infect others who might be in the environment that we're also providing care to, or our fellow colleagues who may then come after us and handle the same equipment or materials that we would be using for those appropriate procedures. It does clearly highlight, highlight here, sorry, some of the steps that the candidate did in fact miss or fail to do. Remember in nursing, it says if we fail to do something, then it means that it was never done. When we're coming to the cafeter specimen of urine in terms of the collection, we need to make sure that we clean the port before and we also clean the port after so that we don't leave any contaminants on the actual port and that our sample that is taken is actually free from any additional organisms which might have accumulated on the actual site um, during the process. Hand hygiene, again, is very important because that reduces the spread of um, infection not only to us, but to others as well when we come in contact with them. The labeling of our materials, we must make sure that we follow those patient rights. We make sure that we have the right client, we have the date of birth, and the identifying parameters such as hospital number, et cetera. Those are also important and we need to make sure that we complete our forms in entirety because if it is not documented, it therefore means that it was never done. Waste disposal, again, just to recap, that is also a very important aspect. We know that any items that we use, we need to dispose of them in the appropriate bins, whether it's domestic waste, whether it's clinical waste, or whether it's infected waste. And we follow the appropriate codes color codes as outlined by our various healthcare institutions. But most importantly, and ultimate to all stations, we must maintain our seven steps of hand hygiene and ensure that we do so in following the five principles of, or the five moments, as they would say in some cases, of hand hygiene. I hope this was informative for you and thank you. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Adrian. That's really helpful. Are you planning to take your official OBT examination from home but don't know where to start? 
Are you new to the OET exam and specifically taking the OET in this type of way? Then we've got you covered. You see, here at IELTS Medical, we've got an excellent online OET at home explanation course and mock exam specifically developed for the OET at home format. You can learn OET material and practice taking a simulation of OET at home too. Our course and mock exam is backed by the latest in AI technology and includes OET at home listening, reading, writing and speaking with live video interlocutors. And the best part is you'll receive your computerized mock exam results within just 24 hours. Learn more. Great. Well, let's move on then to our second example, which is the implementation station. The candidate checked the patient's allergy status on the chart, but failed to confirm with the person in their care. The candidate did not verbally confirm allergies with the patient during this station. Failure to confirm allergies with the patient verbally could lead to a patient being administered medications which they are allergic to. And this is a potential risk to patient safety. Over to you, Adrian. That's interesting feedback. As part of the implementation station and the safety netting that is there to protect clients, we are required to make sure that one, we carry out the patient's ID check before the administration of medication, so that's initially at the start of the station. And then when we re-approach the client with the actual medication, we then need to also reconfirm the patient's identification. This includes asking the client's allergy status. So we would ask the client, do you have any allergies that I, I should be aware of? If the client responds yes, then we are required to ask, do you mind sharing with us what that allergy is? Upon receipt of that information, we then clarify, can you please tell me then what your reaction is when exposed to that particular allergen? We take note of that. So yes, it did mention that the Allergy status was on the chart, but however, if we fail to confirm that, we put the client at risk. And we need to do so verbally, as I did highlight before, where we make sure we ask that client at the initial stages when we introduce ourselves, can you confirm if you have any allergies? Once we've done that, we've moved our medication trolley, we've identified the drugs that we're going to give, then we come back and we do that second ID check, also ensuring that we do check for any allergies again at that point in time, just in case it might have been missed in the first instance. Now, doing so, as it says, once we verify that there are no allergies, then it leads to the safe administration of medication. However, if one fails to do that, then it makes the administration of the medication very risky in that the client can be incorrectly administer the drug that they are allergic to, and depending on the response that the client has, it can then lead to a catastrophic reaction or a very se severe reaction, which could then put that client's life at risk. As a nurse, we are required to make sure that the actions that we do do not lead to harm of a client. And therefore, if our actions or inactions do lead to a patient being harmed because we fail to check the allergy status, then that in itself would be constituted as a medication error and would mean that we're not safe for the administration of medication. Brilliant. That's great. Thank you so much, Adrian. That's really helpful. Okay, and on to our final example for episode 32, and this is from the midstream urinalysis station. Following the procedure, the candidate failed to clean their hands with alcohol hand rub using the seven steps of hand hygiene and in accordance with the World Health Organization, five moments of hand hygiene. Hand hygiene is essential in order to reduce the risk of healthcare associated infections and to avoid harm to patients and staff. In the initial introduction to the examination, the examiner informed the candidate that they are required to demonstrate hand hygiene in accordance with the World Health Organization, five moments of hand hygiene. The candidate failed to interpret the reagent strip accurately, identify the possible significance of the findings, provide appropriate health information to the person according to the results, and inform them of the actions to be taken next. 
It is important that the significance of the urinalysis results are identified so that an appropriate plan is put in place for the patient in accordance with the findings. Discussing the findings also ensures that the patient is fully engaged in their care. The candidate failed to accurately document the readings according to the reagent strip. The candidate reported the urinalysis results incorrectly and did not and not according to the urine sample supplied. A control test was carried out on the sample by the examiner and one parameter recorded a positive result. Failing to accurately read and record the results could lead to inaccurate information being given to the patient. Over to you, Adrian. So once again here, we have it been highlighted that the candidate failed to clean their hands using the seven steps of hand hygiene and in accordance with the World Health Organization's five moments of hand hygiene. I just want to stress here for us that hand hygiene is very, very important. It's key to everything we do in nursing. Let me just remind you of those five moments of hand hygiene again. First one is before any procedure that we do. Then after that procedure, we're also required to wash our hands. If we can come in contact with any bodily fluids from a client, then we are required again to do our hand hygiene. If we touch a patient, we are required again to do our hand hygiene. And finally, if we do come in contact with a patient's surroundings or surfaces, then that's the fifth moment in which we are required to do our hand hygiene. But mostly, also if we're doing any aseptic techniques, we are required to make sure that we do our hand hygiene following those seven key steps. Now, once I've identified that, I can't stress how important hand washing is. Hand washing, hand washing, hand washing. It is the key to our success. There's nothing wrong with overwashing your hands. There is a serious problem if we underwash our hands. So as it did say, when one fails to do the appropriate hand hygiene steps, then what it does is it puts that person at risk because we could be either transferring microorganisms to them or we could be taking microorganisms from them and giving them to ourselves or to the next person that we come in contact with. Now, we are required to make sure we demonstrate hand hygiene at those specific moments within our steps. In the terms of the midstream urine analysis, when we do an analyze our reagent strip, we are reminded that we need to do so according to the timings, which would also be clearly highlighted on the test strip too. Once we follow those, we are then require that at those particular prompts to give the reading that we find because failure to do so can lead to an inaccurate response or reading being done. If the test strip is left with the urine and the time then passes, what can happen is that it can actually change the correct reading for that particular patient. And therefore, if we've given a wrong reading, it means then we're going to be looking at the wrong cause and treating the patient incorrectly. Now, for the significance of this, it did mention that we were required to provide information to the patient based on those results. Now, as I did say, our test strips would usually tell us if there's protein, specific gravity, if there's blood, if there's nitrates in the urine, and so forth. Now, each of these um, give different indicators, which would mean that our responses would differ. Now, the problem with leaving the reagent um, strip exposed to urine too long is that we can give the wrong response. In this scenario, it did mention that the student or candidate, they failed to pick up the positive result and therefore they gave a wrong reading, which meant that either A, that presentation could have would have been missed and therefore it would have gone untreated and could therefore further expose the, the client to significant harm. Any positive results that we do get while we're doing our urine analysis, we should ensure that we highlight it. We are required as nurses to do um, health education, which is also key to our role. If we discover that, for example, if it was positive for sugar or glucose, then we will say to the client, okay, we noticed that you had a positive response to glucose and therefore it could indicate maybe the presence of a high sugar content diet, or maybe it might be an underlying cause, they may have diabetes, who knows? But if we fail to report things like this, then it means then that 
once these positive results go untreated, then we leave our client exposed to possibly coming to possibly suffering from further harm. For example, untreated diabetes, we know that they have severe complications. If the patient is having blood in the urine, they may be suffering from internal bleeds. And therefore, if we do, or it might have been a rupture, they might have gallstones. Who knows? These can all be causes that um, result in the presentation of blood or other abnormalities within the urine sample. Once we highlight these, then we give the possibilities or possible indications to the client. We reassure them and we let them know that we're going to escalate these findings to the medical team so that they can further explore and then be able to provide appropriate, but most importantly, timely treatment to the client, which is paramount. So again here, with the candidate one not reading the, reading the findings accurately, two, not discussing the findings with the client, then, and they fail to accurately document these recordings according to the reagent strip, we would have then put the client at significant risk in terms of possibly wrong diagnosis to wrong treatment. And then this can lead to an adverse effect to the client, which can either be potentially fatal or significantly harmful for the individual. Again, once we've completed our stations, again, we've come in contact with um, human bodily waste or body fluids. So therefore, your hand hygiene is ultimate and important here because we need to make sure that we stop the spread of organisms from patient to patient or surface to surface and vice versa. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Adrian. I'm sure that is going to be very helpful to all our NMC OSCE nurses. So thank you for explaining all our examples and thank you to everybody at home listening and watching. We really hope this podcast is useful to you and remember to like and subscribe so that you never miss an episode. And me and Adrian will see you soon.